Hello friends, hello family, hello brethren. Welcome again to yet another lesson discussion. We are on the fourth lesson of the uh, third, third week of April 2021. And I invite each and every one of you to continue with me in our today's lesson discussion. And our lesson discussion today talks about an everlasting covenant in which we're going to discuss the everlasting covenant between God and Abraham. But before we can continue, I want us to have a word of prayer. Let us believe and pray. A kind of loving master, we thank you, King of Heaven, for this noble hour you have enabled us to see. Thank you for your mercy and grace each and every hour you uh, lead us, Lord. We pray that you may forgive us unrighteousness. Even as you are going to study your lesson, we pray that you may be with us. Lead us till the end, that my, may your name be glorified. Thank you because you are in control. Thank you because you are going to lead us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Uh, welcome each and every one of you to today's lesson study. And our study comes from the book of Genesis chapter 17, verse 7. That is our key text. And I'm going to read on your head. And it says, And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Now, God is making a covenant with Abraham. And he's saying that I will make a covenant with you and your nations or your people and or the generations, the descendants of, no, of Abraham. And he shall be a God to them that this is a people who have been chosen by God and they are going to do the will of God and to obey him and pass on uh, the word of God or the righteousness of God to the following generation. And God is saying that he, he, Abraham will be a person of concern to him. He will take care of him. This takes us to today's story that uh, during our childhood stages, when we, whenever we catch cold or we had a disease rather like pneumonia, a mother will sit beside our bed or where we are sleeping for the whole night or yeah, throughout a recuperating period. This shows uh, the amount of love that you wake up in the middle of the night and you'll find them sitting beside the lamp that is lit in the whole room. This is also the man I twitch God was going to draw uh, Abraham to. He will be beside him if only he chose to obey. This sitting beside the bed also is a figurative or it's an imagery of God sitting beside the sick world that is sick of sin and he's trying to get someone from this world who will believe in him, who will trust him and he'll use him to bless the world, to return the whole world into a uh, back to God through a concrete plan of salvation that he had put in place that he will fulfill as time goes by. And in our past lesson, we looked at uh, how Abraham was called by God and the covenants. In this week's lesson, we are going on with the study of the covenants as they unfold. We are going to see the obedience of Abraham that when he obeyed God, God was ready to make with him a covenant. He was ready to trust him with the truth and the knowledge about him that he will tell the rest of the world. Therefore, God entered into a covenant with Abraham and uh, his posterity that emphasizes in more details the divine plan to save uh, humankind from the results of sin. So the whole plan was to save uh, the humankind from the results of sin. And this week's lesson emphasizes much on the covenants. And we're going to look at Yahweh and the Abrahamic covenant. 
we are going to look at also the name of God, El Shaddai. What does El Shaddai mean? And how, why El Shaddai only? And the changing of name of Abraham from Abraham to Abraham. From Abraham to Abraham. This uh, will give us why the importance of changing of names. Why did God change the name Abraham? Uh, Abraham to Abraham. What is the meaning of both names? And covenant stages. There are different stages of covenant making uh, between uh, the, the creator who is uh, the initiator of the covenants is God and also covenant applications. What uh, do we have the roles in keeping these covenants? What are what is the obligations of God? What is our application as the party to the covenant that God is making with uh, us? This all we shall look at in uh, this week's lesson. And I invite each and every one of you to take part with me in this lesson. So welcome each and every one of you to today's uh, lesson. And uh, the first part is Yahweh and the Abrahamic Covenant. And we are reading from the book of Genesis chapter 15, verse 7. And it says, And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of you, of the childies, to give thee this land to inherit. So God uh, introduces himself to Abraham that he has called him, he is the one who called him, I am the one who called you. I, God, is the one who called you out of you, of the land of childish, and uh, to give thee this land to inherit, to give him land that he himself will, in, uh, will inherit. And the Bible says that uh, uh, it is the name Yahweh that God used to introduce himself. And among the names that God used to introduce himself, it means there is a specific thing. Uh, when we look at uh, uh, traditional or uh, cultures, uh, different cultures in the world, they have different meanings of names. They have uh, attributes or characteristics or traits uh, that are attributed to different names. When you hear like uh, names like Dorcas in the Bible, uh, it gives you can know their traits. Someone like uh, in history, Martin Luther King, they have their own history that we can uh, follow. Among others like Albert Einstein and also uh, J.R. Gadi. Those are names that uh, would say certain characteristics and ideas. But when you go uh, to the history or in the Bible, we find that uh, in the Middle East, names were associated with certain character traits. Maybe an event or the scenario, circumstances that prevailed the mother of the child who is giving birth. This uh, goes well with the African culture. And in which, you know, example in our community, my name is Kip Koyech, and this means porn in the morning. This also goes well, I think, uh, in other cultures. And this, that goes uh, with, uh, the, the names are attributed to certain uh, circumstances at the times the names was given. God entered into a covenant relationship with Abraham. He made himself known to the patriarchs under the name Yahweh. And today we are going to look at the meaning of this name Yahweh. In the book of uh, uh, Genesis 15 verse 7 says, And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of you, of the childish, to, uh, we know uh, he said, I am, I am 
Uh, we can learn this also in Moses' story. When he was called by God, he said, how shall I introduce uh, you to them? He said, uh, uh, when Abra, uh, Moses asked God, who are you? He said, I am who I am. Meaning, uh, if they ask you who I am, tell them that I, I am who I've sent to. Tell them I am I've sent to. What does this um, mean? I am means, or the Yahweh means, that he is self-existent. He is self-sufficient. Uh, he is uh, pure. Uh, there are several attributes that we are given here by a writer. He said that eternal one, the existent one, the self-existent one, the self-sufficient one, or the one who lives eventually, eternally. I mean, uh, God lives eternally. He uh, existed before this world. And we cannot fully understand who he is. So, he, uh, the divine attributes that seem to be emphasized by this title are those of self-existence and faithfulness, uh, and faithfulness. They point to the Lord as the living God, you know, and the keeper of life, the sustainer of life, as opposed to gods of, uh, that other people worship, that they are man-made, that uh, their existence is just in the imagery of their worshipers. This is much different from the God we serve. So it's clear to us now that I, Yahweh means I am who I am. Meaning uh, it tells us of the attributes of God that he was in the past, he is and he will be there forever. The attributes of self-existence and eternal existence. And also why do the reason to, to which uh, God uh, introduced to himself to Abraham is that he wants him to learn about him, to learn about his promises, his identity, personal nature and character. From knowledge, we can learn to trust in his promises. From the, so from the same knowledge, he will learn to trust in the promises that God will make with him. So uh, there is also this attribute of God, El Shaddai. What does El Shaddai mean? Also, this is found in the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 1. And I'm going to read on your hearing. And it says, uh, And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be so perfect. Now, before this, we re can realize that God is this now, Abraham is 99 years old, and God called him when he was 75 years old. Meaning, uh, there are several instances that God had appeared to Abraham before this stage. During his call, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, and giving him of promises in verse 7 of chapter 12, and also uh, the promises of a land of an inheritance, also, he appeared to him on a vision uh, in chapter 15, verse 7 and 18. So, these are different instances that God appeared to Abraham. And we want to study why he's introducing himself as uh, the, the mighty God. He says, and when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to him, Abraham, and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. This Almighty God is exceptional of uh, the names that God is attributed to in other the rest of the Bible. These attributes are the ones given in Genesis and Job only. This signify, signify uh, very different characteristics, meaning he's able uh, as uh, compared to the human ability or capability, it is 
God much outweighs the human ability. This means that uh, we are given to another characteristics of God, another trait of the name of God. He is the Almighty, El Shaddai. In, in what case? He can uh, change names, for instance, from Abraham to Abraham. And he can make covenants with people. He is the one who can introduce, uh, initiate covenants. And in this instance, he is the one initiating covenants with Abraham. And he has promised him a land. He has promised also to give him many descendants. Nobody else can do that. To give you, uh, to be fruitful and to multiply and feel that it's not possible. And it's also going to make him to be, uh, to be uh, a blessing to all the world. Meaning, uh, he will, he's going to use him to reach the Jews and the Gentiles all together. Nobody can do, can do that except El Shaddai alone. These attributes are also uh, highlighted in the book of Genesis chapter 35, verse 11. And it says, And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. Meaning, uh, he will give him um, a multitude of people or fruitful nations and out of him there will come kings yeah he, God only can predict uh, the future and the company of nations of thee and and multiply a nation of thee and the fruit of the womb meaning uh, we know uh, Abraham Abraham's wife Sarai was parent for long but God blessed him with the fruit of the womb and she was able to give birth also to a son, Isaac. This was uh, the blessings of the uh, El Shaddai or God Almighty. These are the attributes of God. And now we are going to the second part from Abraham to Abraham. So God called Abraham and said, and uh, he said to him, Behold, uh, I'm going to read it the way it is in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 17, verse 4 and 5. And it says, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name remain any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations, have I made thee. Why do God change names? That was another question, the next question you are going to answer. You find that Abraham, Abraham means the exalted father. But now God is changing his name to Abraham. Abraham to Abraham. Now, Abraham means uh, a blessed one or he will making a multitude of nations out of him he has been blessed as for me behold my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations now he's called from being an exalted father to a father of many nations that is why god changed his name because when you are blessed if you are poor you no more remain poor but you'll be called a uh, blessed one or rich. So if you change your status, God has changed the st he's changing the status of Abraham from exalted father to a uh, father of many nations. This we see also in different verses of the Bible. In, uh, in Genesis chapter 32, verse 28, we find the exchange of names from Jacob to Israel, where uh, there is a fight between God and uh, Jacob, and Jacob prevailed, and God changed his name into Israel, meaning a person of an, a nation.
from a check of a person to nations. And also there is uh, uh, different instances. In the Bible, we different names have their own meanings or their own significance. For instance, the name Joel means uh, Yahweh is God. Daniel means God is my church. And Nathan means gift of God. Meaning, uh, all names have their significance according to the Bible. And also, uh, unlike today's names, you can find names that are just being given without knowing the background meaning of the name or the significance of the name. And also in the Bible we find uh, that when Joseph uh, called Sephthanael when he married Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, the priest, so the Joseph's name was changed to Sephthanael uh, when he married Asenath, the daughter of uh, Potiphar, uh, the priest. This is in the book of Genesis chapter 41, verse 45. And also in Daniel 1, verse 7, we find the changing of names of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into, uh, from uh, their previous name, the Jewish names, Asaria, Asariah, Michelle, and uh, the other one, uh, because they were transitioning from being Jews into being uh, Babylonians, they were now in a different land with the different rules and their names were changed. Now we find that Daniel is being named uh, uh, Michel. Uh, Daniel is being named Belteshazzar and Hanana of Shad, uh, to Shadrach and to Michelle of Meshach and Asrai of Abadnego. So these names have uh, the sig certain significance. They resemble the gods of the Babylonians, which was contrary to the fact that these people were a chosen generation. They were from the Jewish land and they had their own uh, way of life. They had their original lambs, which was a resemblance like the one that we have just read, like Nathan, which actually meant gift of God. So they had different attributes. And uh, the writer says, with this in mind, it is not so hard to understand why God will want to change Abraham, Abraham to Abraham. Abraham means father is exalted. God changed it to Abraham, which means father of a multitude. When you look at the covenant promise in which God says, I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings shall come forth from you. The name change makes more sense. Five, it was God's way of helping Abraham just in the promises and the covenant that he had, had with Abraham. So it was a way of ensuring that uh, Abraham would trust in God more and the covenant that he had made, which uh, he made when he was 99 years of old uh, and he was married and he had no children up to until being parent and showed God did it to help increase Abraham's faith in God's uh, promises to him. So it helped in improving the faith of Abraham in God. So covenant, there are stages of covenants that God made with Abraham. We find in the first one that when he called him, it says, and God uh, called, went to Abraham and said, I am God which have called thee out of the land of Egypt or out of, sorry, it sounds, we are actually going back to the call of Abraham and it says, 
And now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee, and in thee shall all families of earth be blessed. So God goes to Abraham and commands him to leave his country, that is land of you of the Chaldeans, and go. Take, uh, by, he has given him a covenant that uh, he should go and to a land that he will give him. So the promise is, you will go to a land that I will give you. Those are three stages of the covenant that God had with Abraham. And also, uh, it is uh, the command involved the test of total trust in God. So this command involves the test of the trust uh, of God's command. The approach expresses uh, God's gracious uh, election of Abraham to be the first major figure of this special covenant of Christ. And God is calling Abraham and he wants to invite him because in this concrete plan of saving the human race, the lost human, he had been incorporated. So the only thing that he has to do is to obey the voice of the Lord and follow the Lord. And he has been called to be perfect. So he has to obey the voice of the Lord to work perfectly. And the second stages of uh, God's covenant with Abraham appears in Genesis 5, chapter 15, verse 7 to 8. And this, in this uh, we can uh, see the vision that Abraham had. And he made uh, sacrifices to God. And in the first place, he made a sacrifice uh, of a lamb and a cow or a calf, haver. So, and birds. So he had divided the animals into two, but he had just killed uh, the birds without dividing them. And he placed them on the altar. And God passed through this one, uh, passed through the altar. This was a significance of God's presence in his midst. And this was well arranged pieces of uh, sacrifices. So the pass through uh, these sacrifices was a solemn uh, agreement or uh, uh, vowing perpetual obedience to the provisions that solemnly agreed upon. So God passed through this showing there is a unity in there is an agreement of the government that had been made and God appears uh, in Genesis chapter 17, verse uh, 1 to 14, there is, I just uh, give you the preview of the story. God appears and commands Abraham to walk perfectly before him. And he is promised to make him a father of many nations, to be God unto him and his seeds, to give them a uh, land and a sign of obedience was the most paramount in this scenario. So God has promised to walk with him, to be with him, to use him. And it is the same case as the same way that uh, Abraham was instructed by God was to, to obey. So it is that uh, Colossians quotes that by faith, Abraham, when he walked with God, just counted to him for righteousness. The same way God had invited us to walk like Abraham by faith and hope in God, put all our trust in him that we be saved. There is also the three angel messages uh, in the book of the three angel message in the book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 6 to 7 which has, uh, there is a comparison between Abraham's call and in the three angel message, of which in both cases, uh, Abraham and the messages of the three, that angel 
which is uh, the message of the present world is that uh, the gospel of Christ should be passed to all nations. And the beginner, the, where the message is coming from is the God. And in both cases also, righteousness of God needs to be kept at high. As I, uh, uh, it should, everyone must be righteous before the eyes of the Lord or trust the covenant of God. There is also the covenant application. And uh, this is the last part of our lesson. We talk of covenant applications. And in this, we have so far learned about the willingness of Abraham to cooperate with the Lord in this covenant. So there is an attribute of, uh, of the law or the salvation, the willingness of God to save and the willingness of Abraham to obey. So God had put this uh, plan of salvation to save the human human beings from death it is by God's grace and he said that for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of so God knew the heart of Abraham he knew that this man would cooperate with him he will obey his commandments and uh, this shows the trust that God put in Abraham, that I will use this man to save the world, the rest of the world. I will entrust him with the truth to that to the whole world. And it shows also uh, the, uh, the trust that God puts in us to spread the world to the enriched place. And this also demonstrates how grace and law are related. It opens with grace, I know him. And it is followed by the fact that Abraham is someone who will obey the Lord and have his family obey as well. Faith and works then appear here in a close union as they must. So there is a close union between uh, faith and works as also uh, and, uh, Paul as outlined by uh, James in the book of James chapter 2 verse 17 that uh, even so faith if it had not works is dead being alone so faith without works is dead so Abraham had to by faith trust in the Lord and also do his part in preaching telling his children and doing the will of so this shows that the beneficiaries were uh, much had much application to pay the covenant uh, regulations uh, and also the engagement rule that is in here that they were to be obedient and faithful to the one who sent them failure to which the uh, covenant will be invalid null and void this means that God wouldn't have chosen to work with Abraham but in this case there is sure of cooperation in the side of the beneficiaries of which are man this until this day that we are all invited to also be part of this the three angel message to pass on to all the world tell the world of the righteousness of god and to obey him and also use our families as part of the mission thank you very much for being with me to this lesson and until the next time may the lord bless you let us pray as we end our lesson. Our kind of loving master, we thank you for leading us through this lesson discussion. Lord, we have learned to trust in you like Abraham did. Lord, we pray that you may help us also as we are going to make a choice uh, to trust in you always and to depend on you fully in all our plans. Thank you because you are in control. May I be glorified for it is in Jesus' name I do pray and believe. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you in Jesus name and until the next time don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also share with friends and uh, families.